All right. Watching the world burn. Watching the world burn. July 10th, 2023. I wasn't even going to make a video today, but I got to thinking about things. And I thought about the, uh, well, the evolution of uh, my channel. You know, breaking my neck, almost dying in the hospital, being there three months, uh, trying to survive uh, cancer twice, everything else. And uh, somehow I'm still around, still around. And uh, But I thought about how I have to evolve the, uh, well, I had to evolve the channel. And, uh, you know, back during uh, COVID and everything, I was... Um, well, I was just trying to show people how to live life. I mean, everybody was staying in their houses because the government had ordered them to do that. And I was trying to show people how you need to just get out and go hiking, man. And, uh, and then I would always finish my videos with, it's good, good, good to be free, free, free in the Republican state of Florida. And, uh, you know, that message, it's its old hat now. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get away from that. Uh, because really, I mean, you know, in life, you know, one of the things that, that we can do to inspire others is to show them what we think about what life really is and, and how it should be lived. And, uh, and that's what I was trying to do. And that's why I was trying to show, especially the people in the Democrat states, which a hopeless cause there, uh, was what it is to be free, you know, and, and to, to not be locked down in your homes, uh, not have to take the jab, um, uh, speaking of the jab, uh, we're, we might talk a bit about that. Uh, I got banned from uh, YouTube again uh, for talking about that. Um, they adhere to the, uh, well, they still adhere, and, and why, I don't know. They still adhere to the WHO guidelines. So you really can't say anything outside of that. Now, have I read the WHO guidelines? No, I have not. I, I live in the United States. I, I would assume the CDC guidelines would take precedence over the WHO guidelines, and I'm not trying to piss off the YouTube overlords, which I already have. I'm so buried in the algorithm. <laughs> they don't want me talking about anything, which is, but you know what? I'm still here uh, after being banned again uh, for, for saying something about um, the jab. Uh, so I just, if you want to see me, I'm on Rumble at uh, The Burn. Rumble on The Burn. Uh, so I did want to get into a few things today. Um, I, I was going to get, you know, boy, I tell you, before you make these videos, you get all philosophical. I was watching, um, Garland Nixon. Uh, he, he's a good guy and he was going on and on about things. And I thought, man, you know, maybe I should make a rambling video <laughs> like he just did, but I don't think I could do it as good as him. You just, uh, you got to check out his latest video. Uh, boy, he really breaks everything down for you about uh, a lot of things. And uh, so let's just get into uh, a few things. And by the way, I won't be finishing my videos anymore with it's good, good, good to live in the free state of Florida. So uh, as, as I pointed out yesterday, uh, Tucker, Tucker Carlson, he blew up the Internet with uh, his revelations on uh, January 6th. Um, that's something else we're not really supposed to talk about here on YouTube, but uh, you can watch him on uh, Rumble at Tucker Carlson if you want to see uh, what they, they, they discussed. Uh, it was very interesting. The um, main thing was he was going to interview a... Um, uh, well, one of the Capitol Police, uh, well, actually, the guy in charge of the Capitol Police, from what I understand. And uh, and that was going to be a very interesting interview, and then Fox pff, nuked him right out. You know, that, so we don't know if that's the reason why Fox News nuked him, but it does seem kind of weird in that regard. Uh, so, you know, I, all I can do is take notes, and these things kind of make me think about things to talk about on these videos. I haven't done just a talking video. That's another thing. Maybe uh, give me some comments below. I've been trying to kind of experiment with uh, giving you um, a sensational video from Hollywood, which mainly gets my videos copyrighted, but they're just trailers for the movies. So I don't see how, and especially since I'm not monetized, <laughs> don't make a damn dive. I don't see how they're going to come after me for that because they're advertisements for their movies. And then I always say like Battleship, which was the one I did yesterday. Uh, I always say it's a great movie. You got to go watch it. You know, so I, I think I'm a great advertisement for them. Uh, so if, if uh, I don't think a lawyer on earth is going to say, well, the guy did something bad by showing your sensational Hollywood. And so... 
And then uh, what I've been trying to do, uh, and it, it doesn't seem to be working, and uh, maybe you can leave some comments below. Uh, I've been trying to go out and show you uh, video footage of uh, what it means to fight a superpower. Okay, and so uh, the Russian uh, military of defense, uh, they've been releasing a hell of a lot of good footage. I mean, you might want to say, oh, it's propaganda. It's propaganda. No, it's just them showing their, off their military hardware. And, uh, you know, I want to show you that you're not up against, uh, like uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor says, uh, Club and Baby Seals. In fact, let's just listen to Colonel Douglas McGregor here for just one second. I think right now uh, the situation is as follows. I think Putin privately has thought through carefully the wisdom of replacing some generals. I think we will see continued shakeups in the high command. Having said that, I also think he is now at a, a strategic inflection point. Russia is in the driver's seat. They hold the strategic initiative. He has to decide what he's going to do. Will he sit until after the 10 July meeting in Vilnius, waiting to see what comes of that meeting, if there's any possible ch chance of a, uh, an end to this war through means other than military? Or does he simply say enough's enough and advance on multiple axes into uh, the rest of Eastern Ukraine and then ultimately down to Odessa? I mean, he can do it. He has an inexhaustible supply of forces. And again, I think he's been holding back largely because he doesn't know what NATO will do and he does not want to provoke NATO intervention. But he may discover after 10 July that that's probably going to happen anyway. 10 July is all of NATO plus, I guess, Sweden, not yet in, and Ukraine, right? Yeah. They'll all be in Vilnius. Yes. And remember, the Poles and the Lithuanians have already talked about intervention going in in some sort of joint matter, whether it's a joint brigade or larger force into some part of Western Ukraine. And they say they're going to go in uh, quite apart from NATO. In other words, uh, they're not necessarily going in uh, as uh, sponsored by the NATO alliance. I don't know what any of it means. I think they're lunatics. I think it's stupid and crazy. And I'm sure the Russians feel the same way. But if you're sitting in Moscow, you say, well, perhaps I should wait for this to happen before I unleash the offensive. We may have talked about this about a year ago. Is the Polish army seriously to be reckoned with in terms of size and, and skill and lethality? Well, first of all, the Poles are excellent soldiers. Very good. So are the Lithuanians. So man for man, uh, they're some of the best troops in the world. Let there be no doubt about that. Secondly, they don't have the uh, lethality that they would like to have because they don't have the vast arsenals of equipment and technology that they would need to take on the Russians. They've had to depend very heavily on us for that sort of thing. And I don't know how much ammunition they have for the weapon systems that they, they own. So, All right, so I'm going to pause right there because he pointed out a lot of things that I want to bring to your attention. Okay, the... The, uh, well, the lack of ammo, uh, that's, that, that was huge. Uh, yeah, uh, Ukraine has very good soldiers, so does uh, Lithuania, so a lot of uh, Europe, uh, uh, especially the... Uh, it's getting funny that how the former Soviet nations have some of the best soldiers on the planet. Uh, I just find that kind of weird. Um, but uh, for them to go in and, and fight the Russians at this point is, is absolute lunacy. Uh, I've never seen the world change so rapidly, well, in the last, what, two years. I mean, my God, I, the Russians, I, well, you know what, they, as, as we, I, you know, I want to I give you a little bit of history here and want you to understand. We, we pulled off a coup, or, or uh, Victoria Nuland and uh, the Obama administration pulled off a coup in Ukraine, and uh, we instilled a government in Ukraine, and then we began arming them to the teeth to fight this proxy war, which kind of baffles me because I don't understand why the Ukrainians wanted to fight a war for NATO. You know, I... I it, it, I don't know. Well, I guess, you know, when you take over the, the roles of power, uh, people just find, follow blindly along. 
And uh, right now in Ukraine, it's terrible. I mean, there are press gang press gangs uh, uh, throwing their guys into the battles. There's all kinds. Of, I, and I, I, I should. I'm going to make a video. I'll have to put it up on Rumble. I can't put it up on YouTube. But uh, it's all kinds of uh, of Ukrainian prisoners. Uh, all kinds of death and destruction. Uh, these things can't be shown on YouTube. Uh, uh, Rumble, you know, as long as uh, it's it's real, it's free speech, uh, they're okay with it for the most part. Um, but it's a lot of blood, it's a lot of death, and I've watched it all, and uh, it's 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 it it disturbs my soul uh, just to watch it all. And uh, so I will at some point put together uh, just a tremendous video, uh, just showing. Things, you know, I, I, if you, if you want to just find out what's really, really going on, uh, I would encourage you to watch that video. I haven't put it together. I tell you, every time I get started, it just, I just want to break down and cry, and I can't, I can't put it together uh, from the, the stuff that I've seen. It's just too horrible. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll work on it. I, I got to get my courage together and, and make it happen. Um, so, but let's get into. Uh, uh, some more of the news, um, you know, as Colonel Douglas McGregor pointed out. Uh, oh, and this was uh, this was breaking news. I put this tweet out yesterday is that uh, Russia has gone on the counteroffensive to the counteroffensive. Uh, so in the north, uh, they are striking back at this point. Um, they're moving into the Ukrainian lines. And I imagine there's not much opposition that I think they're going to face. You know, you're talking about what a thousand, couple thousand mile line of, uh, uh, of of frontal conflict. You know, you can't protect everywhere, and I think the Russians, you know, with all of their satellites, they've chosen a place where they want to advance into uh, it further. I mean, because the, you know, basically they, at this point, they, you know, they've just been sitting behind their defensive lines, just waiting for the Ukrainians to come in so they could wipe them out. Uh, now they've done that for the most part, so. Uh, the the counteroffensive to the counteroffensive began yesterday. Uh, that's what I want you to know. I was the first to report on that. Of course, Jason Hinkle, I don't know why he doesn't acknowledge me, uh, but uh, and, and I told him that the whole Prigozhin thing was a psyop, and we're going to get into that more in this video here in one second. And and he kind of acknowledged it. You know, he said, but I'm wondering if he watched my video and, and said, you know what, maybe I need to rethink my, because he was saying 1%, 2%, and then he was up to 20 30%. Now it's uh, 100%. So I was right about everything. Let's just put it that way. All right, so let's get into the news. Um, we got 41 countries uh, that are going to be meeting to talk about the uh, the new Brits currency, uh, that'll be taking place in uh, September. Uh, we've all heard about that. But what was interesting was Russia just announced that they're going to trade with uh, China and Yuan only. So they're completely bypassing the dollar at this point. That's a huge, huge development. I hope you understand that uh, the United States, the empire of the United States is coming to an end. I hope you're preparing. I've been doing videos on putting a guard garden in your backyard, uh, growing vegetables, uh, you know, getting your finances in order, buying assets, uh, whatever those assets may be, gold, silver, platinum, you know, the, and, you know, don't depend on, there's a lot of, uh, you know, I love um, a lot of the, the right wing people that are on the internet, you know, and I, I don't want to name them, I don't want any lawsuit or anything, but they're always advertising for because they're trying to make money and you know there's all of these companies that are trying to get you to do gold IRAs and everything. I encourage you to do your own investment research. I've given you ticker symbols that you can buy into. I, I encourage you to buy the Sprott ETFs uh, out of Canada. Now, with we got a communist government in Canada, how safe are those ETFs? I don't know. I mean, you know, the world goes on, but that, I do know one thing: they have physical metal. It's not like SLV or GLD. You don't want to buy into those on the COMEX, you know. So, uh, and obviously, you know, you should be buying physical metals, you know, as much as you can. But, you know, real estate, uh, it's, it's still sky high. I saw a figure that my house, I, I bought my house. I won't give you the exact figure, but supposedly my house is, well, I don't know, 
doubled and well, almost doubled to tripled in value here in Florida. I don't believe that for a second, but anyway, whatever they want to say. All right, so the other thing is uh, if you haven't been tuning in, uh, the um, boy, I, if, you, if you ever watched Neurotic on um, YouTube, uh, he's a great uh, reviewer of uh, movies and stuff. Boy, I tell you, the new Harrison Ford film, uh, uh, it, uh, it just flopped, man. It was unbelievable. But The Sound of Freedom, holy moly, it's gone crazy. But what's been so interesting is how the left-wing media is disparaging this, this video because it shows uh, child trafficking. And you know what? I think that's because the Democrats, the Democrats, the warmongering Democrats are all for an open border, and they know that child trafficking is taking a place, place across that border, and they're going to be known as hypocrites for opposing this film, and they're calling them QAnon supporters. I don't even know what... what somebody explain what QAnon is. I remember people on Parler back in the day. By the way, uh, uh, Elon Musk just put out a tweet uh, about uh, uh, the fact that Twitter is the only place for free speech on the internet and i said no parlor back in the day was i had thousands and thousands of followers on parlor before uh amazon uh, uh google and uh apple took it down uh in that nuclear strike uh, and then it never recovered and i guess it's gone away now but but, but now we got twitter so that's cool uh and by the way i'm on twitter big time remember it's at that cybersec guy at that cybersec guy on Twitter. I, I guess the next place I got to go is Telegram. I don't know anything about Telegram. I'm going to start looking into that. Uh, I, I only got so much time for this shit. All right. So uh, then we get into Ukraine tried to strike, well, the Kurtich Kirk, Bridge with uh, those shadow uh, missiles that uh, Britain gave them. Uh, it was unsuccessful, thank God. Because uh, Ukraine, I mean, not Ukraine, Russia considers any strike on their territory as an, as an act of nuclear war. But uh, luckily, they they stopped it. Uh, so that was good. Uh, this was interesting. Prigozhin and Wagner, uh, the commanders, uh, they all had a big meeting with Putin. And uh, we don't know what came out of that meeting. But I just thought it was very interesting that after supposedly uh, Prigozhin, and this is why I'm telling you I was right about the PSYOP that Prigozhin would be meeting with Putin. And now, do I think Prigozhin has got some things to answer for, and will he be in charge of Wagner anymore? I don't think so. But I do think it's interesting that Putin's like, you know, hey, you know. So I, I wonder what form or, well, right now we got Wagner in Belarus. So they can come down from the north. And right now the north, uh, uh, Russia is conducting... Uh, the counter to the counteroffensive in the north. So I wonder if Wagner is getting ready within the next uh, couple, three weeks to march out of Belarus and uh, aid in that uh, counter to the counteroffensive. Kind of a prediction, huh? Who knows? So Russia advances in the north. Let's see. Um, well, yeah, and of course I reported yesterday on the cluster munitions and I was trying to show you uh, the videos uh, coming out of Russia. And, and once again, I just want to say that's what I've been trying to show you is the hardware, the Russian hardware. You're not clubbing baby seals. And that's why, and, and what's shocking to me is I would think that people would be looking at what I'm showing them and saying, you know what, look at this. Do you want this coming to the United States, especially out of Mexico? Well, I think we're going to see it someday. So right now we're... we're as, as um, Colonel Douglas McGregor says that we're, we're uh, on a planet all to ourselves. But guess what? I, I wonder when the Russian, Chinese, and Indian, and uh, the whole world hordes are going to sail across the ocean and, uh, and decide to put an end to the United States. Of course, we're doing it to ourselves anyway. All right. So, um, yeah. So everybody, it, well, and this was interesting. Spain came out today and said they're condemning the uh, use of cluster munitions. And I talked about that yesterday. I won't go into how bad they are. Uh, uh, children everywhere are going to get their hands blown off for years and years to come as we provide those to... Uh, it's, the, it's the last gasp of a dying empire. That's what I'm telling you. Uh, then we got into Erdogan. He supposedly betrayed Russia. Uh, he sent uh, five NAZIs back to uh, Ukraine... 
Um, but that was a, 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 from what I understand, that was a negotiation for a trade of prisoners. Uh, to me, it looks to me, I mean, and everybody thinks that Russia is pissed off about it. And maybe they are. I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not a, if I could be a fly on the wall in the Kremlin, I would love it. But from what I can see, Russia got everything out of the deal they wanted. I think they got some prisoners back and they got to end the grain deal. If you don't understand the grain deal, Russia was trying to get grain uh, through Ukraine to uh, South Africa and a lot of poor nations around around the world. And, uh, and instead, the grain was going to Europe. And then also, a lot of the ships that were going in and out to ship the grain uh, had NATO weapons on them, according to Russia. Um, so they wanted out of that deal. And if, if you don't understand Russia, I mean, I know you can't believe it, but they wanted an honorable way out of that deal. And I think that that's what they came up with. That they, they, they used Erdogan, uh, or Erdogan agreed to to go along and uh, allow them to get out of this grain deal, so that now they no longer have to ship the grain anymore uh, to to Europe, where when they really wanted it to go to uh, Syria and a lot of their the countries that they they felt like needed it a lot more. All right, so. Um, Oh yeah, this was interesting. The Russian fighter planes are rolling off the uh, the uh, production lines in record numbers. Holy shit! These and these are the new fighters. These are the uh, what are the Su thirty five, and I want to say Su twenty five. I'm not sure if that designation is correct, but anyway, their latest fighters are coming off, and I would say they're far superior to anything that we have here in the United States, especially the the uh, I'm hearing terrible things. Terrible things about the, uh, the 35 uh, that was meant to replace uh, the F-16 and the F-16. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, because our, our defense manufacturers were all about profit and not quality. And uh, so the 35 uh, plane here we have in the United States, I don't think it was going to do well against these fighters. But um, uh, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, I broke, broke this note down. Surprise if Ukraine makes it to the end of August uh, in the war. That's going to be, uh, that'll be interesting. Uh, another huge event, uh, Nate Netherlands uh, farmers, well, they're winning the battle. Uh, their prime minister just resigned. And if you didn't follow the, the protest in the Netherlands, uh, they were trying to end all the farmers and seize their farmland and kill all the, uh, the cattle. Uh, because they're supposedly producing too much nitrogen, even though, what is it, 70% uh, of the atmosphere is nitrogen? How in the world that climate change argument got into the, 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 the these globalist climate change lunatics uh, conversation? I have no idea. But anyway, so uh, uh, it looks like um, they've, they've won a huge battle. Now, I don't know where that's going to go. Uh, I'd like to think that, that they're going to get their land back. Uh, and we'll see. But I mean, I, I hope you watch some of those protests. It was kind of like the Canadian truckers. Remember back in the day when they were protesting in Canada? Um, they lost the battle. Uh, Trudeau somehow had such power, he was able to just you know roll herd right over top of them. But uh, I don't know. And, and Netherlands, they were, it looked like the, the, the farmers in, um, in the Netherlands were going to lose. But I think they, it seems like they've got hope now. All right. So let's keep going through the news. Uh, all right, so I'm sorry, getting a long, long-winded here. Uh, Bakhmut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This was this was interesting. So, if you didn't know, the uh, the Russians because they took Prigozhin uh, seriously, they sent the Chesneyans, ten thousand troops down to. Uh, God dang it! I didn't write the down down the name of the town. Uh, to to basically head off Prigozhin's uh, Wagner forces when they were trying to conduct. Uh, to me, it was a, uh, uh, I don't want to say insurrection. It was a military, um, anyway, mutiny. It was a mutiny. Okay, so now they're being redeployed back to the Bakhmut area. And right now you've got 60,000 Ukrainian troops faced off against uh, uh, about 50,000 Russian troops. But of course, Russia has air supremacy, so it really doesn't mean a whole lot. But now they're putting in another 10,000 Chesnian troops. And like I said, I told you that the, the Russians are going to be advancing from the north, in my opinion. 
So I think this is more of uh, Russia getting prepped for their counteroffensive to the counteroffensive. Uh, so that's that's 10th. And boy, I tell you, I wouldn't want to face the Chez Chesnians on a battlefield. Uh, the other thing is we're seeing a lot more uh, Ukrainian, uh, not just soldiers, because uh, that was kind of what we were having. But now we're seeing entire units surrendering to the Russians. And, and what the Russians are doing, and in my opinion, it's very smart. Uh, as far as I can tell, I'm not seeing anything in the news that they're treating these uh, prisoners uh, badly. And uh, in fact, there was one Ukrainian commander, um, he had so many dead and wounded, and he had no support from uh, his command that he surrendered to the Russians on the, on the uh, auspice that they would uh, provide medical support uh, to all of his uh, dead and dying soldiers. And the Russians agreed to that, and so his entire unit um, surrendered. So I'm not sure if that was a company level or, or might have even been a battalion level, but the battalion had been decimated. So you might as well look at it as a company level surrender. And that was, uh, that was a huge piece of news that came out. Um, so that was, uh, that was interesting. Uh, okay, I, and I already talked about the Sprite ETFs uh, in the Indiana Jones flopped. Oh, yeah, well, I talked yesterday about the new Russian tanks that are entering the field of battle. Uh, these are their new, uh, boy, I tell you, these things, they blow away the M1 Abram. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, you know, they're still experimental at this point. Uh, like I said, the Russians, they don't want the uh, NATO getting their hands on one of these tanks. So they're keeping them in a standoff position, and they're just kind of trying them out on the battlefield. But just the fact that they're out there now and they're producing them, I thought that was very, very interesting. Um Trying to get, um, yeah, you know, a question that maybe you can answer for me below, you know, on my videos is how in the world did NATO get all the Ukrainians to die for NATO? You know, I, I, I mean, I, I understand there's some NAZIs there, you know, that really want chomping at the bit to, to go up against Russia, but I don't get how they got the whole country to go along with this, uh, this major war against against Russia, it just seems kind of weird to me. I'm, they're bound to have known you, you can't fight a superpower. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they didn't. Uh, so anyway, um, let's see. Uh, I just want to see if there's anything else. Uh, sound of Freedom. Yeah, we talked about the child trafficking. All right, so I guess my new close to the video is going to be, and I'm going to work on this, and maybe you guys can help me with this, is the John Ca Johnny Cash parody. And uh, I kind of tried this out on not yesterday's video, but the day before. So I'm going to start finishing off my videos with this. You could run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar. Go tell that Democrat writer. Tell that rhino rambler. The nuclear war gambler. That backbiting United States politician. Tell them God's gonna cut them down. Go tell that globalist liar. Go tell that midnight CIA writer. Tell that Diablo gambler. Tell that nuclear war gambler. That backbiting United States politician. Tell them that God's gonna cut them down. Tell them that God's gonna cut them down.